Um, so I'm going to show you how to open with the four directions, and then we'll see how, you know, as a universal truth, it, it all sort of correlates. Um, so if you're interested in Padre Santo, you can take a picture of this packet. And if there's enough, you guys can take a piece home. I have plenty. Um, I think there is. I think there's enough for everybody. And what we do is we take it off. So you shake it off and you just have the smoke. And then what I always do is I just create a circle. So I'm literally creating a sacred circle. And the circle is a symbol of unity. The symbol represents spirit. I work a lot with symbology because symbol is the language of the subconscious. So when you guys, today Sonia was asking about dreams and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Dreams are simply symbolic state. So ceremony, ritual, like when we do the Agni Hotra or when we chant or we open sacred space, all we're doing is we're speaking to the subconscious. Remember, the chitta has everything stored. We're going to see that in the moon. And so all you're doing is reawakening what you already know, what you've already learned. Okay? So when anytime you see a circle in any symbolism at all, it's the symbol of spirit. Anytime you see a square, it's the symbol of matter. So those are standard symbols, universal symbols. So I work a lot with symbol and ritual and ceremony, and I have like a lot of books, and I'll teach clients, like when they're, I teach intuition development or Akashic Records, it's one of the things I do is I have people do a symbol, symbol dictionary. So the symbols that you get from dream or you get from your guidance, you now have this language in which your spirit speaks to you. So we make a circle so that everyone's encompassed and everyone is equal. That's the beauty of the circle. Everybody's at the same level. There's nothing with hierarchy. It's just perfect round. And it's like what I told you yesterday, contraction and expansion. That's the circle. It contracts, it expands, but it's always that one. So there's a lot of symbolism in, in, in unification, the mind, body, spirit, we're all one, everyone's a mirror, all of that in that symbol of the circle. So in shamanism, what we do is we call in the four directions. And the four directions are east, south, south, west, and north, right? And each direction represents a time period, sort of like the Vata period, it's a, you know, period and Kapha period. And it has an animal, so it represents an aspect of our life. So there's parts that are introspective, parts that are more about happiness and joy, parts that are more about outward seeking that we'll talk today about the evolution and the involution that we started talking about yesterday. And what all of these traditions say is, we have all of these aspects within us. Basically, all of the seasons we have within us. If we are to think that it's always going to be spring, we're going to be highly disappointed when winter comes. And a lot of us are in a winter period right now. Saturn would be considered like a winter period, where there's loss, where there's death, where we're losing our leaves. But because we know the cycles of nature, why Ayurveda is in alignment with nature, we know that what, after, what comes right after winter? Spring. So I know that this period of my life that's winter, that's dark, that's cold, that's death, is going to come with a spring, which is a rebirth and flowers and love and birds and singing. And so it allows us to know that we're constantly just traveling through the seasons in our own way and we're traveling through all of these directions. So in shamanism, what we do is we create a circle and we, we call it opening sacred space. And there's various ways to do this. Um, you can take like a maraca or a noise maker and you can call in just basically the four directions. So when I was first starting out, good morning. Good morning. When I was first starting out, I used to live in this little apartment. And I would go out to the patio, and there was like this little grassy knoll. And it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'd take my little maraca, and I would call in the four directions. So you start with calling in the, um, we call them the winds, the four winds. You call with the four winds, and the first one is the south and it's ruled by the serpent. So you ask the serpent to teach you to shed your skins. So detachment, what we were talking about yesterday. We detach from our values, our judgments, our fears, all of these things, so that we can sort of move into the next direction of life. 
then we call in, <coughs> excuse me, go west, and that's by the Jaguar. This is when we're introspective. This is like a winter period. So we call the Jaguar, we ask them to show us our past behaviors and how we can shift. Then we open up the winds of the north, which, are, which is ruled by the hummingbird, and it's a time of joy and nectar and sweetness and happy times. And then we call in the winds of the east, which is ruled by the eagle, which is about having a perspective to create something new. So when I was talking yesterday how we're kind of like going upwards and we're chiseling, chiseling, chiseling at these limited beliefs that we have and these false beliefs, well, eventually, once we've sort of leveled the playing field, then the ego is sort of representative of that. Now, show us the new us, the new perspective. So I would go out in this grassy knoll, and I would like, you know, shake my little rattle, and I would call in the four winds. And there was this gentleman who was Muslim, who lived, like I was on this building, and he was in this building, and he would be out there saying four o'clock in the morning doing his prayers. And it was so beautiful, because there's just these universal truths, and it doesn't matter which way you do them. So that's why one of the ways, that, the reasons I wanted to talk to you about it today is because it's exactly the Sri Yantra that we use. It's a symbolism that we use, and I'll pass it out in a minute, in, in Ayurveda or in the, the, the Eastern. So why do we call the four winds? Let me pass it out so you can make some notes to understand the similarities. So, uh, Caroline, I was just teaching sacred space in the shaman tradition and showing that universal truths are universal truths. No matter what technique you use, it's the same thing. And you want to probably have various things in your tool belt for your clients because different things will resonate with different people. Right. So sometimes I have very pitta clients, no time, they don't care about any of this. All I have them do is like say a prayer of gratitude over their food. That's enough. Are you guys familiar with um, Dr. Emoto? Thank you. Dr. Emoto is a gentleman who studied um, the molecular structure of water. And I'll send oh, you a little video. Yes. And when you say thank you or love or beautiful things, it crystallizes. It looks amazing. It looks like these beautiful crystals. We can watch it. And when he said ugly things to it, it looked disgusting. It was distorted. It looked like dirty snow. So if we are 80% water, and what we were talking about yesterday, the mind is in each cell, and we're going to talk about the qualities today. Imagine every time you tell yourself, I'm not worthy, or I'm a liar, or I'm a piece of shit, or oh my God, I suck, or I can never be able to do that. That person's better than me. Imagine how that is creating that molecular structures destroying mm -hmm. so sometimes people don't have time they don't want they don't want that puja room even if it's time so you give different things so you could open sacred space and take the 20 minutes call in the directions and shake your morale or you can just say i'm opening sacred space and like i said yesterday in that space you eliminate doubt shame fear all of those things it's just the same as saying thank you over the food you're already shifting you know, sort of what they're eating, even if it's a McDonald's burger. So we're not limited in how we can help people. It does not have to be these big, humongous, grandiose things. If we just shift one tiny thing, remember it's the acorn, you're already tackling the oak tree. The bija, the bija. The seed, yes, the bija, and we'll do that next weekend when we do the, the chakras, absolutely. That's huge. Sometimes I'll just put some some incense in my house if I'm in a hurry, and I'll just sing one of the, the bija mantras as I'm doing it. I mean, and that one thing already starts to shift things. Are you familiar with sacred geometry? Okay, this is a form of sacred geometry. I'll talk to you about it. So, why do we call in? So I created a circle of with the holy stick of sacred space. Do you guys want to take a piece home? Sure. Here, can you take it home? Um, it just really just oh, it's 
just so nice and it's light. It's not as heavy as, as the sage. Um, so I created this sacred space with the circle as a unifying thing. And I was saying that the symbol of the circle is a symbol of spirit. Okay, symbols have long sort of weighted uh, energy and, and, and long-term meaning. And if we understand what symbols represent, and then we understand what are the ways that the universe speaks to us. So um, we call the four directions, we call in the four directions, because the symbol of the square or these doors are the only way that we, as human beings, can manifest spirit. So what we do in shamanism, we call in the, the, like I said, the south, the west, the north, the east. Then we call in Father Sky, Mother Earth, and then the Creator. So everything is in that point of creation. In the Sri Yanta, this is a universal symbol of creation. This is how it all happens. So in the middle, can't really see it, but in the middle of all those triangles, there's a little dot. And that dot is called a bindi. You can't see it, you can draw it in. And that is the thought that makes everything that happens in your life. Okay? So in Ayurveda, and you have this in your notes, you have manyate iti mana. And that means one which creates realization. That is the mind and that is the thought. That is that bindi. That is right in the middle. From that thought, those triangles are what you create. Those are your circumstances, those are your stories, those are everything that you're living out. And then, we have these four doors. It's the same concept, the four directions. Spirit cannot materialize without earth. The symbol for spirit is the circle. The spirit for earth is the square. The triangle is the strongest force on earth and it is the symbol that is necessary for creation. You know Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva? Are you familiar with Brahma, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva? That's called the Trimurti in Hinduism. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Christianity. Positive, negative, neutral, science. In numerology, the number three is the number of creation. Without three wow. forces, you cannot create anything. There's a symbol in alchemy. I'm sure I'm gonna mess it up, but. It's like that, but I can find the exact symbol. All of these three symbols have to be in whatever tradition. They're universal truths. You need spirit, you need matter, always. Nothing can be created, spirit and matter, purusha, prakuti. You can't. That's why we start from the universal consciousness and we come down to the Pajamahabhutas. They're the exact same thing. Nothing is more important or less important. So this symbol, which is our symbol of creation of the universe, you can extrapolate it down to your life. But you need the square. These are the four doors. Without matter, without this earth, we cease to exist. Without this body, there's no way for the mind to manifest. But it is the mind, that bindi, that dot, that creates the realization, which is those triangles. Now the triangles are going up, the triangles are going down. Because we get to choose if we are going to behave from our higher nature or our lower nature. If we're going to behave from our lower mind or our higher mind. In astrology, from our third house, which is the lower mind, the logic, or the ninth house, the higher mind, our spirit, our spiritual beliefs. Every single tradition says the exact same thing. These things are necessary. They're always present. So what happens? Someone like me, a lot of people that you will see, have been hurt. They have pain in their life. They have pain in their body. 
What do they do? They check out of their body. This is called dissociation. We dissociate from our body. Therefore, I'm only going to live in the head, migraines, or I'm only going to live in my higher realms. I'm only going to work with spirit. That was me. I studied, I, I have a degree in nutrition. Ask me about the anatomy. I know nothing. I refuse to have anything to do with the physical body. I was that checked out of the body. I can't even tell you what side the pancreas is on. This is how checked out and dissociated from the body. So cancer forced me into the body. And now I feel everything. So yesterday, how many of you dreamed, had dreams? Okay. And you had no dreams. What happens when we start talking about stuff that's stored in this chitta, stored in the subconscious that we don't have access to? We bring it to the conscious mind. Yeah. And we have to process it. Okay? Some people process it through the dream state. When we're in dream, we're in what we call the astral body. Okay? The astral realm is where we dream and we, it's poop. It's like, pooping all the crap from all the day and the years and all of that. So that stimulated hearing those truths about yourself, connecting to those things that maybe are embarrassing or shameful or, or, or what you would call not truthful. You have to process it somehow. Whereas Marion, who's so logical, and she saw that she had Saturn in her third, would dream a lot in her day to day. Yesterday she didn't dream because she processed it in here. But we need to get it out. And the physical body, why people hate the body, why people think it's the body, why we have such issues with the body, whether it's eating disorders or whatever it is, is because the body is the loyal servant and it forces the thoughts to be channeled through this and it hurts. So when people check out for chakra issues, people are checked out. A lot of head issues, seventh chakra issues, they are checked out of the body. That's when you bring them into the body. You give them these dinacharis, you give them the abhyangas, because they need to start knowing that this is a loyal companion. They're not, this isn't just here for no reason. We have to connect it. So that's why you always need a body. We do not heal or process karma in the quote unquote afterlife. You only burn karma and learn lessons in a physical existence. It's written, I think, in the Vedas or the Upanishads that quote unquote time, there's no time in that realm. That the time you spend here, so let's say 80, 90 years, is the time you're over there sort of in respite on the plane that you're sort of hanging out in until it's time to take the new physical body. So for people like myself who wanted to check out, and there's so many of us, so, so many of us, people that are especially are attracted to the psychic realms are that. That's like a symbol, Pisces. That's like 101. That's why in every tradition you have to have the four directions or the four doors or the square because it represents the earthly realm. Now we are in a state of mind, I was telling you yesterday about the yugas in this Kali Yuga, where we have gone overboard into the earthly realm. Jesus said, be, of the, be in the world but not of the world. Most people now, the way that we're headed is that we're of the world. Our car and our watch and our sex and our body and our boobs and our, you know, and all of that. So we've gone into the other direction. And that's why there's such an imbalance. But in a balanced state, it is impossible to have spirit without matter. It does not exist. So I'll teach you a little cue. Okay. What is this the symbol of? Female. The female. What does female represent? Mother. Okay, what else? Compassion. Compassion. 
question? What else? The moon. Nurture, nurturing. What else? Um, life. What else? One key one. What are all of we? <laughs> all of us. Humanity, teachers, people. <laughs> what do all of us have in common that he doesn't have in common? Oh, us? women. We're women. <laughs> That's a sign right there. <laughs> okay, a lot of masculine energy. Okay, so if uh, yeah, that's very telling. I bet you can do the answer, <laughs> but you didn't say. Well, because you also told, you gave the tell. You had a tell. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Because you you stopped your hand at her. Oh. <laughs> so spirit cross. Cross or a square is matter. That's why Jesus died on a cross. Okay. Spirit oh, wow, and good. matter. Okay. Always. Harusha, Prakriti. Right. Universal consciousness, Panchamahabhutas. You cannot separate it at all. So we have the circle of spirit and the cross of matter. And I forgot my markers. Let's see if this one works well. That one takes a break. So this is the symbol of Venus, or the Divine Feminine, or Mother, life, absolutely. You cannot have life unless you have spirit and you have matter. I did not have life. I was walking dead. Didn't know it, but I was. Going through the motion in a total sleep state. Because my body was like an inanimate, unenergized thing. Checked out over there was my spirit, right? That isn't life. And that's the clients you're going to get. People are not unified. So what is the problem with this? Mother, woman, all of us have that issue. Because of what I was talking about yesterday with the women's movement and all of that. And we've lost our role. The woman, how are you a woman? What makes you a woman? When do you become a woman? With your puberty, with your cycle, the development of your breast. Your reproduction. And then right. this allows you to have sex. Correct. Sex. Second chakra. Desire. Hmm. What about woman? I mean, mother. What's the mother about? Pregnancy. Okay, but it's nurturing. It's, you could be the universal mother that okay. we have here. And you have moon and Pisces, which I didn't know, so you are the universal mother. Okay. Compassion. And the, woman, the mother is the compassion and the nurture. So whether it's a healer or whether it's to your child, this is the spiritual aspect of the feminine. Fourth chakra. The heart. We second chakra li lives in the lower nature. Our lower nature starts first, second, and third chakra. Our higher nature is fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh chakra. So love, life, sex, desire, maternity, compassion, universal love, in one symbol. The thing is, it has to be balanced. Spirit and matter. Most of us are not. We're either too, too much. I was way too much spirit. Didn't want any matter. Most of my enemy is way too much matter. Right. Doesn't have any spirit. Right. That's why there's no life. That's why we're sick. That's why it's illness. So when I started healing, I started watching the show Shameless. Anyone ever see Shameless? Okay. That show, I attribute that seriously. That show, I watch that show, I get scared because it's like a mirroring of my freaking life. In a very weird way, very abstract. Not that I'm living that. that that's telling a lot about And <laughs> I would watch that show, and that show is all sex, drugs, and I don't, that's not my life, that's not how I live. But I tell my husband, I'm like, oh my God, I have no connection to my second job, I have no connection to my lower nature. I was so checked out of this, so checked out of the body, 
that I was like clueless. And that's where my healing began. My healing began in the second chakra with the desires, with identifying that the senses, with identifying these pleasures of the body. It seems counterintuitive, but if you have someone who's so here, you need to bring them here. And if you have someone who's here, you need to bring them here. It has to be the balance. And what is the balance between the second and the fourth chakra, Mrs. Burkett? What's the balance between the second and the, and the fourth? fourth chakra? That would be the third. The third chakra. And what is the third chakra? So the plexus, uh, emotion. Self-worth. Mm. Self-love. Mm. So you have sexual love and That's sexual the desire in the second. That's where you have sex. But it's through sex and the creative energy that you give life or you birth. That's why Shiva is in the second chakra. Because you must create life. People, if you are not creating something, if you are only working, in contrast to what you want, you are dead. You must live somehow, and it has to be something that you create. I ended up birthing a book through my experience. I literally like birthed this thing. I lived every word of it. You have to. If not, you are dead, and that can only be done in the material world. That is why, whether it's the four directions or the four doors of the Sri Yantra, you have to make it in this lifetime. It has to be material. It has to be Pachamahabhuta. That is why the mind forms the body. And whatever is in the mind creates the realization of the body, of your life. Your life is a body. Your life is material. There's a story. There's an action. There, there, there are characters. There's a home. There's a car. You created all of it on that one thought that I showed you yesterday that we're going to look today at the chart. So this is a super important symbol that means desire, eros, erotic, passion, pleasure, sex, means motherly, compassionate, universal, divine love. You need both. But the seatbelt, as I call it, the little union, self-love. So if you are giving too much, you're selfish. If you're giving too little, you're selfish. Misuse mm -hmm. of the senses. Totally. That's why it's beautiful, but you must understand. I am, I need this. This is part of my healing, accepting and receiving and giving. But I need to say you have to make sure you are aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it, which was yesterday's exercise, because if the self-worth lies in service, then it's selfish. Mm. It's not true service, and it's selfish to your being, to your, that's why the Agni, that's why it's all about the Agni. The digestive fire is telling you about the person's personal power. Is it dull, is it too sharp? If it's too sharp, if it's that tick shot me, they have to go, 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 go. What need is that? Of the four. The one that's always moving. Uh, validation need. They're only worthy of their doing. That's a very picked up personality. You see how it all is intertwined? Mm -hmm. So if that agony is so, so, so strong that it is burning the food, those people are not enjoying life. They don't have life. They don't have a balance. They're probably much more on the cross of matter. And they're seeking validation through what they do and create and process and, and have sex with and buy. And then if you have someone that has such mandami and so, that person probably has like no sort of oomph. The world isn't safe. Let me sort of just be here. And so even through the digestive fire, the mind created that to send a message. Because the third chakra is the center of your personal power. And why do you think it is exactly at the union 
of the lower nature and the higher nature of the third chakra. Just like this. Because in order for you to know that you are the Atman, in order for you to recognize your universal consciousness, that you are God, you must be in a physical body. So your personal power must reside in the lower nature. And two? Three. And two. You cannot manifest. Spirit can do nothing without the body. The body is the servant to that mind. So your personal power, your agni, your self-worth, your self-love, why is it in the higher chakras? If you're divine, why is it that in the higher chakras? Because it's only through the body and the material and the senses and the bhajra mahabhutas that you can show that realization. But we're not acting from that realized self. We're acting from the mind. But we need this. So when you're checked out like I was, you were sick. And most people you're going to find do not have self-worth, do not own their power. That is why we start with digestion and anything in Ayurveda. Because it tells you. And the key thing is, even if I have desires, even if I want to have sex, even all the karma, the, the stages of life, does not keep me from being a spiritual being, does not keep me from not being truthful, does not keep me from my highest self. But I must accept one thing. I am human and I am flawed, my body, but I am still the center and the source of everything the spirit. I am still God even though I'm in a bunch of crap. <laughs> layers and layers of crap. I call this finding my divinity through my humanity. I am divine but my encasement is human. And the only way that we will reach self-realization reach that understanding of our true selves is that we accept ourselves as flawed human beings but love ourselves unconditionally despite our flaws. That's how this all comes together. That's why it has nothing to do with how many days you meditate. It has nothing to do if you eat a vegan diet. It has none of those. Those are practices that help people. Remember what I told you yesterday? The Dina Chari, that's just mind stuff. Because the less clutter, the more routine, the more acceptance, the more you know, high vibration practices, whatnot, the closer you can get to this. I love myself, third chakra, in spite of having a contradiction that I am a lower natured being that curses and likes sex and loves to pee out and drink. <laughs> And also that I can love everyone as my own. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. That's the big secret. Mm -hmm. And how do we start? By identifying our values that are erroneous. Because those values come from our parents. And how dare I be worthy of love if I violate the rules of my home? of my here, of the values I was given. So it's the first place to start because you have to love yourself in spite of the fact that your family thinks X, Y, Z, but you think something different. And that's why health, and health only resides when you are unified in mind, body, spirit. When you say, think, you act, and you feel all the same. If not, you're selling yourself out. You're taking your Agni from your third chakra. Every time you say, oh, that's such a pretty dress, and you're thinking, damn, you look horrible, you've just put water out on your digestive fire. I don't care how much hot water and lemon you're drinking. I don't care how much tri triple A you're drinking. 
those things are there is physical to help alter but this is the powerhouse of it all I mean I say this and we know it's everywhere but so the mind the mind creates realization manyate iti mana and so it does not matter what system of belief you have the symbols and the diagrams represent the same thing you need spirit what you think creates your realization the life you're living and you have to experience it in a material world and this is our symbol of universe of how it all happens i brought a book on yantras if you want to look at it later there's a gazillion different yantras but you'll see and then there's different deities associated with different ones this is a whole study that i don't i created my own yantra for my book um but if you guys want to look at that later you can but those are the symbols and that's one of the beauty beautiful things about astrology that's one of the beautiful things about connecting with your guidance a lot of it is it's just symbol and we have all these symbols stored in our chitta because we live lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and we know in our consciousness in our subconscious what they are we represent so this is one of the key things that is happening how can i be a woman and a mother for instance well ironically the thing that unites being a woman and a mother is sex is a second chakra thing but sex isn't only the act of sex it's the act of birth it's the act of creation so i don't know if you guys ever noticed in miami it's pretty evident when you see a funeral home there's usually like a hotel right down the street yeah you always find sex and death together why birth and death and death yeah. always and the eighth house in astrology is the house of sex and it's the house of death sex do not take sex second chakra sex could be anything anything desirous and it could be anything that creates and that's why it's shiva cuz shiva creates he destroys and creates and our whole life say the whole life is about death and rebirth we talked about yesterday as we were walking out in every breath something is dying and something is being reborn so when we hold attach to a value or to a relationship or to a car or to a job that has expired we are dead because we're not allowing the act of birth to come in we're not allowing the spring to come forth we're not making space at all and so we're dead we are dead and that's why attachment is the root of all suffering mm -hmm. because as we attach we are closing off our second chakra we are not allowing the new birth to enter that's why a lot of these um these spiritual models talk about sex it's distorted and of course you have the tantras that talk about sex but it's more than sex it has to do with the creative force the venus the universal mother but also the woman the feminine and women have been chopping this off now for a long time but it's coming back with a vengeance because we have a misunderstanding of what it is to be feminine. So this is about birth, this is about creation, this is about life. And if we don't have a life source, second chakra, something that makes you want to create a muse, whether it's love, whether it's art, whether then there's no life. So if people come with second chakra issues. I'm going to teach you next time how to with easily with a pendulum 
see the chakra issues with people. You don't even need a pendulum. You can close your eyes and you can see the people, but I'll give you some pointers on how to do that. But if you want to do that before the person comes to see which chakras are out of balance, it's another way. So now you have the tool of the chart. You'll have the chakra stuff. So you'll have all this other information and you haven't even met the person. I know everything about my client before they even, most of my clients I don't even know, they're over the phone, they're all over the world. Before I call them, I already know everything. It's just energy. It's just subtle. So this I can move. When I clean a chakra, I go like that, but it's energy, I'm taking it. That's why I said the mind is material. So, how does it work? is what it's called Ubhayindri. I want to cover certain things that are going to be on the test. The test is super simple. I looked at it today. So I like to teach the good stuff, but I know that you have to have these concepts. Ubhayindri means that the mind is an organ of perception. Therefore, the senses are involved. And it's an organ of action, meaning the body is involved. So what happens, like I said yesterday, the cycle of desire. You're wearing something pretty, I want it. This desire starts in me. It's my senses, watching Sonia's necklace, ooh, I want that. And what do I do? I now go to the store and I buy it. Or when she's not looking, I steal it. Right? I do something. So it's an organ of perception where all of my senses, or one of my senses. I smelled the baked bread and I had to go into Publix to get a loaf. Okay, I saw something and I wanted it. But then the body follows suit. Here we have it. The body follows suit and I go after it and I do something. I eat it, I buy it, I have sex with it, I mold it, whatever it is. I smell it. So we're constantly using the mind to move the body. So that is Ubhayindriya. The mind is an organ of perception. You have all five senses involved. And that's why the senses are the quote unquote downfall. I have this note. I must have left it. Is that in the in slide? Yeah, that's in the slide. Yeah. I'll read you the test with you. It's very simple. But I, okay. So in Vedanta, they have this thing. The deer hears, I don't know if it's the hunter or what he hears, and he goes after and he gets killed. The elephant touches. They touch one another. They're very uh, uh, tactile animals. And what happens is that they hold their, horn, their, their trunks and the people that hunt them create like these craters in the earth so that they're so busy touching, they don't notice, and they fall into the pit, and then they're killed, and they're taken to ivory. The bee is drawn by the sense of smell to the flower. The moth is drawn to the fire, the sense of sight. And the fish is drawn with the sense of taste. These animals, with one sense, get killed. Imagine us that we're always with all five. It is death. It's a continual perpetual death. That is why in the Gita says it's a downward spiral. So in the Kriya Yoga tradition, they have you do this thing. I forgot the name of it. I wrote it. Where you put your thumbs and you cover up all of your senses and you feel like you're disconnected to the world. You start sort of connecting with your inner, inner space because you're closing off the, 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 the sense organs that are the ones that are perpetuating the desire. So we have an excess here. So that's why we engage in these yogic tradition, in this meditative path, you know, because it just helps to calm all of that down. Like, I'm not a mall person. If I shop, it's usually via a catalog. And that's just a learned behavior from years back. And so during the holidays, my daughter loves to go to the mall. And I go with her. 
And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God, and I have this and I have that. And like in two days, like I bought all this stuff. It's like, because I was there. Because my senses were stimulated. I don't really think of those things. But if you enter that space, that's why watching these shows or being in these places doesn't mean you don't live in the world. It doesn't mean that you castrate yourself from, from the world, but you live in it. You know, wrong use of the senses is part of the, the issue with, with the illness. So it's through these senses that we connect only to the external world, and that keeps us from our inner space. So it's not about cutting yourself off from life and not living and not having friends and not going to the clubs. It's about limiting it. It's about having the balance. Then enter your puja, then meditate, then light your incense, then open your sacred space, then pray. So that's what we're trying to do with our clients. Most of the clients are gonna have an excess of the matter. So we're trying to bring trickles in of the spirit. And we do that in whatever way we can. We meet the client where they are. It's very, very important. If we expect that our clients are going to start chanting and they're going to start meditating for an hour, then we lose them. They'll never come back. It's a slow process. Okay? Because when you're too attached to the body, the body takes longer to catch up. And so that's why it's a slower process. Yes, because remember, the body is the Panchamahabhutas. It's the densest form of the mind. And it takes a lot longer for it to catch up. You, you can shift by you sitting and everything else and everything you moving forward, and all of a sudden things are very out of balance and the body starts feeling it because it's trying to catch up with everything else that's going on. Absolutely, and you also are fighting your lower nature. You're fighting your lower nature. I have some questions, so we'll go through them and then you have them, so that when you have situations that come up where you're sort of fighting the divine will and the free will, that's the fifth chakra. Okay? When you're in the fifth chakra, you're fighting divine will and free will when people have problems. So saying what they want to say, or what, what happens when we're going to say something. A lot of people, when they go on to speak or something, they, <clears throat> they clear their throat. It's usually a sign of, I don't know what I'm saying, I don't believe what I'm saying, I don't have confidence in what I'm saying, I'm a bullshit artist. Or my heart is in a different place than where my head is. It's not. It's not in unification, it's not unified. So we see a lot. And this happens to be, penis happens to rule the throat and the skin. The thyroid, I told you guys yesterday, with protection. So, that body is so dense and the mind is so subtle, but the body is the grossest form of your mind. That's why you can look at what your client comes with physically and know what they're thinking. So I was telling them before you guys, all of you guys got here, I have a client who was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, young, 40 years old. And her mom has been a client of mine for many, many years. And a few weeks, maybe two weeks before she got the diagnosis, her mom came. And she's like, my daughter's not feeling well, you know, what do you see? And I saw that there was an issue in high school. I said, there's something here in high school that happened, and this girl is, is stuck in that moment, and it was pretty tragic. And she's like, well, she left track, went to basketball. I'm like, well, I don't know. It feels like this is really heavy. And, and the mom astutely asks, do you think this has anything to do with the fact she doesn't have children? And I'm like, yes. I said, please go home and ask your daughter what it is. Turns out her best friend was killed by her mother. Her best friend's mother killed her best friend. And that created a trauma. So what happens in the body, why so many people like myself dissociate from the body and are so not in the body, that is the purpose of the abhyanga. That is the purpose of these therapies to the body, self-love. Okay, it is, I have this, this is here, this, this is in existence. That's why we want to bring the breath, we want to bring the touch, we want to bring our client into the body 
so that they start this connection because many, many people, because of pain and trauma, which we'll see which Saturn, have checked out of the physical body. Why? Because the physical body is what holds the pain. And the way that it holds it is by emotion. So when this girl, her best friend is killed by the mother, that girl took that mind. This hurts. Mothers hurt. You can't even trust your mother. Life is dangerous. Women are dangerous. This, this, this whole thing that she experienced. And she sent it into her energy body, her subtle body. That's what we do. I remember I said yesterday, the Adi and the Viadi. Years have passed, and now she manifests two days later with pancreatic cancer. And pancreas is the sweetness of life. The cancer is, I am distant from, I need more sweetness. But she has this bitterness. And of course, she could never have kids. She couldn't have kids. Because how could she heal this? How can could, how could she deal with this trauma? So illness shows up, whether it's a toe fungus, whether it's a heart attack, whether it's an alopecia, whatever it is, to tell you what is in that client's mind that they have stuck. It's an emotion that is stuck that has to be processed. It's one of the reasons why we dream. Because if we cannot process it in our physical body because it's too hard, we process it in the astral body because at least we can get out the crap of this that happened to me. What I told you yesterday about the colon. So, she gets this diagnosis. She comes to see me and we talk about this. So she has to process this, but we must process it in the body. We must process emotion through the body. But people check out of the body. You're going to see lower chakra issues, and particularly first chakra issues, the vata vitiation. All vata vitiation is related to being checked out of the body. All of it. That person has a trauma and an emotion that is not processed. It is stuck. And unless we go through the process of unsticking, so to speak, and feeling that pain and healing from that trauma, we cannot reach our enlightened state. They're like, they're called, in, in this one therapy called biodecoding, they're called bioshocks. They're like little bioshocks stuck all over the body and the cells. So maybe the car accident was, wasn't such a big deal. Maybe your father beating your mother was. So you develop something in your heart or you develop something in your breast healing your mom or like your client who you know is dealing with this because he's healing for his son and the organ whatever it is no matter the minuscule symptom that they come with oh i have a little pain back here it is the materialization of the mind and it is the wound that i told you yesterday started conception, gestation, birth, and then your zero to seven story. It is there. Any one of those is going to get it. How and why that? they have that particular symptom. It's all about broken bones. Total joints. Oh, broken bones has to do with self-worth. Hmm. It has to do with structure. It has to do it. So possibly you can get a lot of broken bones. Your dad was never around. Or your father died in the middle of the day. <coughs> the bone is kapha. The bone is substance. The bone is what makes me see you. It is the foundation of which everything else is built. That means that person's foundation is destroyed. I had a woman five years ago, maybe, who came from uh, bone cancer. And this woman must have been my age, and she looked like she was 80. She was crippled. She you know, shows up with this thing. I don't know her. It's a client of mine who buys her a session because she loves her so much, and she's like, she's going to die. She walks up to the house, and I said, you don't need to die. You, you, you don't need to die. And she had bone cancer for four years, which is like a little abnormal to be. It didn't make sense. I said, you don't need to die. 
Um, I put her on the table and I go right to her first chakra. And when I go into the first chakra, my hands become my eyes. So I just feel whatever's there and it tells me. So I go in and then all of a sudden there's nothing. There's like a chunk of time that's disappeared. And I'm shown that she has an issue with a man of authority who didn't who like didn't accept her and that that's the origin of this bone cancer. And she's with her friend, and I don't know any of these people, and her friend is like, is that true? She goes, yes, she goes, my father disowned me because I married a Rastafarian and she was an Orthodox Jew, or he was an Orthodox Jew. And so their children were, you know, mixed and the father knew. And she's like, oh, but we've healed all that. We're, we're fine now. And that's what you will hear from people. People will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I already, I already dealt with that. That's why the seven years, every seven years comes up to you to heal with that more and more and more. And so I said, no. I said, if you heal this, if you process, if you fully work through this emotion that's stuck in your, in your bones, then you can, you can heal. I saw it. You don't have to die. So the bone has to do with the foundation and the structure, and that's usually the father that's shifting, but we're still, you know, um, back in that symbology. And so people that come with that kind of stuff, broken structure, bro and you ask, you can ask, specifically, you can jump right in, intuitively think of, of what the organ is for, or how it associates, and you'll learn more and more when you go to associates, because you'll get more of the sort of specifics with the, the disease process. But if that's the structure, if that's the kapha, that's the foundation, there has to be something that's shattered in the foundation of that person. And if you ask what happened or what was the family structure, or tell me about your structure, do they have structure in life, do they not, they're gonna, the whole story will unravel. And so illness is simply the materialization, the density of that unprocessed thought, of that wound that you fully could never accept, that you were still attached, that you should have had a mother that was different. You should have not had to have that childhood. You should not have had to have that heartbreak. That is it. It is a lack of acceptance that that happened to you. And until we can fully process it, and so sometimes that's why illness is our friend. Illness is not a bad thing because illness shows you what you still haven't accepted and still what you haven't processed in your life. There's this beautiful movie, it's called The Age of Adeline yeah. with Blake Lively. And in the movie, she gets hit by lightning and some weird thing happens and she stops the aging process. She's like 107 years old and she looks like she's 45 still. And it's, it's, it's such a spiritual movie. I'm breaking down the message for you. So what she has to do is because she looks so young, she can't obviously stay in a job forever because she'll never age. So she's constantly fleeing. She's constantly moving from city and state, country and so forth. And of course, she's constantly falling in love and she's constantly getting her heart or breaking people's hearts because she can't marry you because she's never going to get old. So at one point in the movie she meets this man and she, he takes her home to meet the parents. Turns out that the father of the new boyfriend was a lover of hers for many years before. So she walks in, it's Harrison Ford and Harrison Ford is like, <laughs> Adeline and she goes, no my name is Jenny and Adeline's my mother and she puts this bullshit. Anyway, she has this scar from a moment where the two of them had been together and he had stitched her up, so he knew the scar. And she told him, she's like, this happened to me and I don't know what to do. So she runs away. She ends up running away and getting into a car accident and whatever happened, I don't know if she got hit by lightning again or whatever, unjolts this freeze in time and she ends up in the hospital. And the boyfriend shows up and she tells him everything. And then a couple of scenes later, you see she starts getting gray hair. 
This is what happens to us. We are stuck.